Hello, this is Beastly Eel with another Eel Talk. And on this episode, we're going to be talking about the newest episode of The Bad Batch on Disney+. Plus. So in this episode, um, as I do with all these episodes, I'm going to talk about the episode and then kind of see where we're going here. Um, where I think the series is going to continue. Um, this particular episode has only one storyline. Um, so I don't have to keep going back and forth between stuff. So the Bad Batch land on this planet to get kind of more supplies and stuff because they're running low on pretty much everything. So they land, Tech um, stays with the ship and kind of sees what he can do to kind of make sure that they don't get scanned um, to kind of scramble their signal for the ship. So that way they don't get traced by anybody. Wrecker was ordered to stay behind because he'd stand out in a crowd too much. Um, so Echo and Echo, Omega, and Hunter went into the city. Um, Echo was dressed as a droid, so that way nobody was surprised about his appearance. So anyway, the three of them are walking around. Wrecker's not happy with him being stuck um, back at the ship with Tech. So the three of them are walking around. They're realizing that this they're celebrating this planet is celebrating the end of the war. And the Empire is now in control. And so we see a similar kind of pillar that we've seen in a, a few of the episodes so far is kind of like make sure you you um, get your clearance codes and turn in all your credits for Republic um, for Empire credits <laughs> and stuff like that. And it's Rampart again, I believe. It looked and sounded like him. I'm assuming it's just a recording message that it's being sent to all the planets that they liberate. <clears throat> so. Um, while this is going on, they're trying to sell some stuff to this um, market guy. I don't know how to describe him. He's definitely a shop guy um, to kind of so they can get some credits. Um, he offers them pittance for stuff, but he does want the droid, aka Echo. And Echo's kind of. Well, Echo clearly doesn't want to be sold, um, and he doesn't want to blow his cover either. So Hunter, as his master, um, is waiting to hear the decision, and so he offers 2,000 credits, and he pulls Echo aside to talk to him, and Echo goes, no way in heck. He goes, I'm worth well more than two grand. He goes, all right. He goes, well, let's, I'll negotiate, and then he goes, Four four thousand credits, and the guy goes three. So Hunter sells Echo, and tells them when he calls them just to go. So they get three thousand credits, um, for selling Echo. Um, when Echo gets sold, he meets up with a bunch of droids, um, which is interesting. While this is going on. Um, Omega is playing with her doll and the creature that's very similar to like um, a creature we saw in Resistance it was used as a pet um, bites the doll and so Omega chases after it because it's in a I don't want to say it's a speeder but it's in some sort of vehicle um, taking off so anyway she runs after it and now Hunter doesn't know where she is um, and that causes a problem. So he starts looking for her. Now, while this was going on and the ship landed, the... Oh, what the heck is his name? He doesn't have a real name, but he's like the dock guy. You know, where you dock your ship. Um, he calls somebody in to let them know that there are enhanced clones that have just landed. And we see a familiar face. Now, she's only familiar to those of you who have watched The Mandalorian. It is Benny, Benny Shand, Shand? Oh. 
I hope I didn't get her name wrong. She is a bounty hunter assassin. Uh, we saw her in The Mandalorian, um, which is obviously after the Empire has fallen. So, spoiler alert, she's living through this series. Anyway, um, she's an expert marksman. We don't know yet her skills now in the past because there aren't as many years of experience behind it. Um, it's voiced by the same actress who played her in The Mandalorian, which is nice. And she goes looking. So Omega's running around, running around, running around, and Omega trips and falls and realizes she's lost. That's where our friend, the bounty hunter, finds her and offers to bring her back to her friend. And Omega is very trusting of this person. Big mistake. Um, so anyway, we have that going on. Um, tech is ordered by Hunter to figure out what's going on. You know, find Omega, we gotta find her. So he hacks into the security cameras and communications and he finds her and Hunter goes after her. Um, he also orders the ship to get ready. Um, and Tech goes, well, there's not much of a ship left. I would take everything out. He said, we need a bunch of service droids just to get this back into order if you want it done quickly. So Echo goes, I have that covered. So he liberates all his little soldier friends. <laughs> they aren't soldiers, they're just droids. But anyway, he lets them out and they go to the ship. Wrecker is ordered to go help Hunter out. <clears throat> so Hunter meets up with the assassin for the first time. More than once. Shocking. So anyway, the two of them try to blast each other. Um, nothing really happens. He throws in his knife. She blocks it. I mean, it's a decent fight scene, but it's just, we know it's not the final fight scene. So they're running away. So during this fight, Omega runs, and the assassin runs, or I'm sorry, the bounty hunter runs after Omega. And Hunter is kind of knocked back, so he's trying to figure out how to get catch back up to them. Omega goes into the service tunnels, the assassin follows, um, she bumps into Wrecker, who, who was ordered to go down there by tech, because he had saw Omega go down there. So he orders Omega to go back to the ship. So she starts climbing a maintenance tunnel, tower, sorry, not tunnel. She's in the tunnel, but she's climbing up the maintenance tower. So Wrecker's going to fight the assassin. And this is by far the quickest fight I have ever seen. He goes to punch her. She uses his momentum, slams his head into a pipe, and he's knocked out. So she starts following um, Omega up the maintenance tower. So Omega gets out. She locks the maintenance panel, I guess is what you would call it. Um, to make sure that her assassin friend doesn't go after her. Well, while this is going on, um, Hunter gets on a speeder bike and starts looking around for her. While Omega's up there, it's clear that the assassin gets there to the door because there is a blaster that's blast that tries to blast through the door. And the first blast. I don't know. I, it looks to me more that it shocks her than anything else, than it actually does any damage to her, meaning Omega. But it backs her up and she slips. And she's hanging on to the edge of the maintenance tower for dear life. Um, so Tech notices it. He lets Hunter know. Hunter starts speeding as fast as he can over there. Omega goes to fall. The bounty hunter catches her. She notices that Hunter's getting close. She lets go of her to fall onto. It's got to be some sort of just supply truck. The, the bounty hunter jumps on there too. 
and they begin to fight her and Hunter. So while this is going on, Omega notices a lever, and she jumps over to it, pulls the lever, and the s supply truck, it's not really a truck, starts to op uh, lift up and drop all the, oh my gosh, drop all the supplies. I don't know why I couldn't think of that word. Drops all the supplies, and the would-be assassin gets knocked off. She lands on a different speeder. She kicks that guy off. Um, Hunter gets her. Um, well, Hunter almost gets her, I should say. She smashes into him. He gets knocked back. The police come after her. She kills the police. Um, he shoots her engines. He takes Omega, and they get out of there. Um, her ship explodes, and she lands on her feet, limping away. So Hunter gets to the ship with Omega. Wrecker is running as fast as he can to get to the ship. Um, and they all get on the ship and go away. Hunter explains to Omega that it was clearly a bounty hunter and they were after Omega specifically. Um, so now they're going to try to find out who she is. Granted, we all know who she is, but they don't. And who hired her. And the episode ends with our assassin friend calling in to let her boss know that she did not get the bounty, but she'll continue hunting. So, we see our friend from the Mandalorian. Um, this is obviously, it's not really pre-Empire, but it's like at the beginning of the Empire. Um, I think it's just surprising to me to know that she was a bounty hunter at that point too but it's nice to see um what else what else what else i am going to guess that the person or people that put the bounty on for omega were the creatures the clone creator creatures because they need her alive to be able to do whatever it is they wanted to do to begin with to create possibly a super clone I think is what they wanted to do, if I remember correctly. So I'm thinking that they're the ones who put the bounty on her because they want to make sure that she's alive and in their custody. So in case the Empire ever decides to go against them, they have the necessary equipment to be able to deal with them. Other than that, though, I have no idea where else they're going to go. I mean, we're, we, obviously we're going to see crosshairs again. We're going to see the Empire really become more the Empire. But other than that, like specifics for like who we're going to see and stuff like that, no idea. I mean, we could see everybody and nobody, and it wouldn't necessarily ruin the show. Um, so be interested to see where they go in the next episode. So, as always, if you like the content you're seeing, please like and subscribe below. Um, other than that, this is Beastly Eel, signing out. Have a good night.